The other day, I was just trying to chill and play some Phantom Forces, and as per usual, I went to pick a random weapon from the, like, 200 weapons that exist in the game. And I had a bit of a thought. There are a lot of weird guns in this game. Now, weird doesn't necessarily mean bad, just, you know, weird. I mean, because look, we have belt-fed MP5s, competition pistols, suppressed sniper revolvers, rocket-powered carbines. There's a lot of weird stuff. And being the probably too high level that I am, naturally, I have all of this stuff unlocked and can just pick out from the list of other relatively normal weapons and use whatever I want. So I want to go over some of the weird weapons of Phantom Forces, talk about why they're weird, and see if any of them actually make sense to use. And of course, if they actually need to exist in the first place. Spoiler, it's about to be wild. So because I'm not a maniac, I did actually include a little bit of like a list with this, and I'm going to be going by level just to have some idea of what I'm going for here. So first, I'm going to start with the SR3M. And just from like a normal gun standpoint, this one's not too out of the ordinary, not too weird, nothing too crazy about it. So why am I putting this level 6? 69 carbine as our first thing on the list here. Well, if you stare at this long enough, um, you'll start to see that it's it's literally just the ASVAL. It's got like the same stuff on it. It's got like the same grip. I mean, this one's a little bit camouflaged, but it's it's the same weapon, same stock and everything, just with that gargantuan suppressor cut off the end. I mean, the whole reason for the ASVAL's existence is basically just like to shoot subsonic, right? You're shooting slower rounds out of an integrally suppressed weapon. So it gives you like a much more kind of sneaky type uh, type weapon, right? So, if for some reason they decided to cut the suppressor off, I, I I don't know. It's a fun weapon and all, but, like, it takes away the whole point of why the weapon exists in the first place. Alright, not terribly weird. What's next? How about a weapon that fires little metal discs and, uh, is basically just, like, that nerf disc-throwing machine weapon thing? Because for some reason at level 87 they give us this thing, I don't quite know why. It's- <laughs> it's really weird. And I guess in a more modern sense, it's basically a railgun. Which, in my limited understanding of railguns, is basically just a weapon that fires using like magnetic energy or something I, I don't quite know but <laughs> it's um it's really weird because it actually does a ton of damage if you build it correctly <laughs> this is ridiculous why am I allowed to play like this so pretty much what I've done is I've actually given it a ton of damage by throwing on a home defense setup and heavy discs for the ammo type and that brings us to 35 maximum damage with a minimum of six damage because well if you run this weapon stock um <laughs> Yeah, damage is pretty bad. So now there's actually both a primary and a secondary variant of this as well. And it allows you to kind of dual wield them if you really wanted to. So we could technically, um, we, <laughs> for some reason we are allowed, hold on. For some reason we're allowed to run it like this. I don't know why, but bro, look, look at that damage. What's going on? No, I'm actually running this as the secondary, which is called the advanced coil gun. It's basically the same thing. Just it, it works a little bit better for damage with this particular allotment of attachments. Some might call it a setup. What makes it even better too is that this is technically categorized as a shotgun. I don't quite know why. I don't think that this weapon actually fits any conventional description of a shotgun, but okay. Now, all right, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to top here because this is like why, but at level 122, we unlock, um, this. <laughs> <laughs> you might be thinking a couple things now. For one, I think pretty much all of you have actually seen this before. It's the Type 88. There's nothing too crazy about it. It's basically the North Korean version of an AK, like their own little copy. And for some reason, they put a big PP Bison style drum on it. Like, it's not bad. It's not really too weird or anything like that. Damage is like actually pretty solid. Recoil is not too bad. Nothing like that. It's just kind of your average AK, but just with a big drum on it for some reason. But if we go a couple more ranks up, we unlock the, the, um... Uh, the, 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 the cast, the, the CAC SSR, I, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. It's a revolver sniper. I don't know why it exists. It does a lot of damage. Uh, <laughs> I don't quite know why they added this. I don't know what it's from. I don't know what country it's made in. I don't know if it's real. Like just, what, I don't know what's going on here, but like I, I'm, I'm saying though, look at that damage. That's, that's pretty good. Multipliers and stuff. Oh, it's all pretty good. And you really can't do too much to it. Like you can throw on a couple of attachments, like a sight and a ballistics tracker, but no barrel attachments. Grips really aren't going to have too much of an effect on this. I guess realistically, oh, but Steven recoil is reduced by 0.01 percentile. Uh, shut up. I'm not using this thing because I care about recoil. I'm using this because I want to use a revolver sniper and it's, it's pretty good overall. It's just really weird. I don't know why <laughs> why does this exist it's kind of good though honestly now of course if we go up one more rank just one more you get um the uh the the um, the ramay the 
we, okay, we've done this too many times. The Rama is what I'm gonna call it because it's easiest for me, is a very strange weapon. Now, technically, I know some historical stuff to do with this, vaguely. Pretty much what it is, is they took like a Makarov, like, you know, that thing from APOC 1 and from Black Ops 1 and from Modern Warfare. Yeah, they took that like chassis, I guess you could say, like the inner workings of it. And they tried to make it like an open bolt submachine gun. Like you can see here, I'm going to take the weapon skin off of this. You can see that it's got like the handle and the trigger and like all that kind of stuff of a Makarov just with this, this funny little spring in here. What's, what's going on back there? Oh yeah, and I forgot something too. I actually have a conversion on this because this is what it looks like by default. <laughs> it's got a big, dumb, ridiculous looking drum on it that fires at 950 RPM, 80 rounds, and damage is fairly low, honestly comparable to a Zip-22. So I affectionately like to refer to this thing as the Full Auto Zip-22 because that is basically what it is. Like the Zip-22 even has a drum for it, so it honestly just, that's, that's what this is. Now, the cool thing is recoil isn't too bad on this, actually, as you'd kind of expect from like a fully auto pistol. Recoil's fairly low. And of course, you can throw attachments on it. You can put like silly little sights and stuff. I mean, it, you know, it, it works. It's okay. <laughs> it's just funny hearing all the hit markers and just watching the guy sit there like, oh, he's doing so low damage. He'll never kill me. Little did you know, my friend. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. Now, if we go up just one more rank above the, the Rama, we get the Gyrojet Carbine. Now, this weapon is going to be one that really needs no introduction at all. But for those of you who don't know, it is a rocket-powered thing, weapon. Basically, what they did is the company who manufactured this made their own, like, rocket-powered ammunition. Um, yeah, I, I don't quite know why they decided to do that, but they did. And now we're left with what is called the Gyrojet Carbine. Now, technically, there is a pistol variant to this weapon as well. So much like the E-Gun, you can dual-wield a primary and secondary version of it. But for the sake of brevity and for the fact that this is just kind of the overall better one... We're gonna talk about just the primary variant of this. One of the main features of this weapon is that it does more damage at range, which is only one of two weapons in the entire game that does this. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> And it honestly kind of makes it one of the best snipers in the game because of that. Because again, the farther away you are, the more damage that you do. However, up close, it um, it, it doesn't quite perform as well as I'd like it to. But at range, it's... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Ah, <laughs> this thing. This thing is funny. However, one of the other main downsides of it, though, that makes it not as good if you really wanted to use it as a sniper is the fact that its velocity is very low and its drop off is very harsh. So like, sure, I can maybe snipe a guy over there, but the drop off is pretty bad. And obviously it takes a while for the round to get into that window. And of course, instead of reloading magazines, you reload each shell one by one. Shell? Rocket? I, I, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> this thing's weird. However, still a fantastic weapon. Still a great choice to use. Just look at all these easy kills, dude. This thing's just great. It's just a great weapon. Like, I, I, I need to switch to the next thing, but I, I can't be stopped. Speaking of things that can't be stopped, what can be stopped is actually, like, mid-reload, you could stop reloading the individual rounds and just continue the fight. Like, it's just, it's good. It's a good weapon. God, we can, I'm on a nine kill streak right now with this. Now, one of the most recent additions to the game is going to be the BWC-9A. And what it pretty much is, is like the FMG-9s from like Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3. It, it's going back a while. But basically, the premise is that you can fold this thing into a tiny little box. Oh, I, I, there we go. Pro plays. You're not doing it. I hear you with that freaking 1858 carbine in here. He's gone. Get out of here. Now, for what it is, it's a pretty unique submachine gun in a lot of ways, even though it has pretty standard SMG ammo being like a three shot up close, like a five or six shot at range, which is actually really, really standard for these kinds of things. It's got a super unique recoil pattern in the way that it kind of moves around. It's a little bit difficult to see because it's got small magazines. But if you've ever used the HK-21, it basically kind of hovers in like a figure eight type pattern. Now, what's also pretty unique about this is it also comes with an extended mag. Not all weapons do. It's got a reduced magazine for whatever reason. It's got a couple different ammo types that are pretty standard, but it also has a semi-auto and burst conversion for it. Putting it to semi-auto increases damage up close and at range, but lowers fire rate and keeps recoil relatively the same. 
Just because it's semi, it's a little bit more manageable if you spam click. However, I don't really think semi is all that worth it just because your DPS is going to be higher if it's fully auto. I mean, I'm sure you could do the math on that, but uh, I would rather use this thing full auto like it's intended. And for being rank 149, uh, it's definitely a very unique SMG. Now, of course, the one that everybody's dying to see is going to be the HK-51B. It is essentially a cut down HK-21 or a belt fed MP5, as I like to refer to it as. Now, this thing fires full 556 five, rounds, so it's a little, little bit bigger than a... Uh, <laughs> conventional mp5 its recoil is just like it's very violent it's not like the hk21 or the mp5 it's just this like very violent slamming back and forth motion and because of that it is very very inaccurate it's it's very difficult to make out on this wall but uh just take my word for it you notice something about that kill though even though it is extremely inaccurate, up close, and just because of its volume of fire it still lands a ton of shots right where you're trying to land them I don't get how I got that kill. I don't. I don't understand. That's right, everybody. Sit still. Sit still and let my HK-51B do all the work. Just, just sit there and eat the bullet. But of course, it is not nearly as high of a level as our next weapon here, the FT-300. Because this thing is just a flat-out competition rifle, not meant to be used in a combat scenario like Phantom Forces. I don't even have 100 kills with this thing, dude, and it's been out for years. <laughs> and I'm honestly probably making a mistake by using this on a, like, an actual sniper map. What the heck was that animation? Yeah, let me just, let me take off the weird conversion I've got on it. Now, damage on the surface doesn't look too bad. It basically performs like a BFG in the sense that it's a single-shot weapon that you reload after each shot and because of that originally when they first added it i remember thinking this thing was really cool it was basically like an over leveled bfg oh, dude the iron sights they look so cool but i can't see anything out of them all right we're, we're putting we're putting like an actual scope on this i'm gonna spend the credits i don't care oh, i see you boom still no kill because this is again another one of those weapons that you have to headshot with all right, there we go. There's my kill. I mean, I, I, t I like to tell people and I like to say it because it's true that there are no bad weapons in Phantom Forces. Everything's got its use case if you're good enough. However, I'm not good enough to use the FT-300, so we're going to stop now. And on to one of my favorites here at level 176, the MGV-176. Now, this weapon here, a lot of people in my original video on this thought that it was like that angry swarm of bees weapon from the Forgotten Weapons video, but it is not. It is like a Russian slash Yugoslav clone or something. I can't quite find out exactly. It's a weird little weapon. It fires 22 caliber rounds. It fires a lot of them very, very fast. And I really, if anything is to be a contender for the Zip 22, it's going to be this thing. This is the LMG Zip 22. Oh, I gotta go. I don't know where I'm getting shot from. Oh my God. The level seven coming out of nowhere. Don't pick it up. Don't pick it up. Yeah, and it does like 10 damage. It's There's nothing that you can do about it. Like you could throw on a hollow point and stuff if you really wanted to, but it, it it's, it's 10 damage. Now this one's actually cool and it's one of my favorites because of the fact that it's just such a ridiculous weapon. I mean, the concept is funny. You just have a ton of 22 like stuffed into a big goofy drum on the top of your weapon. But what I like is the fact that it actually can work sometimes. <laughs> and lastly, on the weird weapons here, I think a lot of you guys probably kind of assumed what it was going to be. It, it's the can cannon. Yeah. The can cannon is a very, very unique weapon for what it is. It is, I believe, the highest level weapon in the game, if not just under. And now by name alone, and by the fact that it has a massive can on the side, you'll kind of get the premise here. It is a can launcher. That is what it is. It is the chassis, or rather frame, of an AR-15 style M4 platform, all American design weapon. But it also fires cannons. But alongside firing cans, it also fires cannon balls. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not lying about that. Because, of course, yes, a weapon like this definitely has to be one of the most unique weapons in the game for a variety of reasons. And in the, one of the ways is basically how it's built. So first, you can basically change what it's firing here by changing the barrel attachment. So we've got anything from golf balls to cannonballs to freaking tennis balls, because why not? And in the ammo category, you can basically pick what ammo you want to fire out of it. So if you choose things like 223 blanks, you're going to have a lot more magazine ammo. So you won't have to actually reload your magazine for a while because this fires blanks, of course. And then if you choose 762, it's like, it's a little bit more powerful, fires the thing a little bit further, but it's got a little bit less ammo. And then same thing with the 50 Beowulf, which is what I always run. You only get 10 rounds in a magazine, 20 total rounds that you can hold. But because naturally when you're when firing a cannonball, you're going to have pretty heavy drop off. So you're going to have to have the most powerful ammo type to send it as far as possible. So we basically get like something that has virtually very, very little drop off. Um, 
and like straight up cannonballs. And of course, whatever you're firing out of the barrel is going to do different allotments of damage. Now, this firing cannonballs, it is a pretty, pretty much guaranteed one shot. Let, let's just say that. You could spend probably two or three hours just mixing and matching everything on this. A very unique weapon, very fun. So, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe with channel notifications on to get notified of all new videos. I've got a lot more fun stuff coming up soon. Got a lot of different challenge videos and stuff that you're not going to want to miss. And if you feel like this content's worth your money, then you, much like the people up on screen right now, can become a channel member. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to check out my other Phantom Forces playlist up on screen right now. You can check out like 400 other videos. It's a lot of fun. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching. <laughs> In the dots? <gasps> that was so loud. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Run! <laughs>